All right. Hey, thanks everybody for, uh, for coming out on the second day here. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, Eric Redell with um, IT Renew. Um, I lead the engineering team for our Sesame product line. Um, if you don't hear what you want to know in, uh, in this presentation, you can just go to our booth, which is right back there, and uh, a lot of people will, will be able to answer your questions there. Um, so what I wanted to overview today is a couple of innovations that we've done over the last 12 months or so um, to increase the density of the solutions um, that we're providing using the OCP standards, right? And, um, and so I'm going to talk about a couple of innovations on um, density. First is compute density. I'm going to talk about storage density. And then unless they kick me off, I'll briefly talk also about GPU density um, as we're doing, right? So, so let's start with, uh, with the converged infrastructure, right? So, um, so one of the first um, things that we looked at um, when we started putting together the Sesame Solutions, right, we were focused on um, kind of a wider array of customers beyond kind of traditional hyperscale, right? So we had a number of, of enterprise customers. They're looking at uh, VMware scenarios, high IOPS, you know, in some cases maybe even database, you know, things that, that wouldn't normally immediately come to mind with, um, with OCP. And so one of the things they're looking for is, is high performance storage, high density storage. So, so what we did um, with our servers is we used this, um, this design here from OCP. So the card that you see there is something called an AVA card. It holds four uh, M.2 NVMe devices, right? Um, we have on the, the Leopard server that's shown here, we actually have um, a by 16 slot and a by 8 slot. So that means we can actually take six total devices um, NVMe, um, M.2, up to 3.84 terabyte, plug them directly into the PCI off the riser, right? No controller, no nothing, right? So VMware, this is all VMware approved. There's no controller, there's no level of indirection, there's no performance speed bump, right? Because we're just plugging these devices right into PCI. Um, this card is basically just plastic and, um, and um, some traces, right, to get it connected. Um, so nothing fancy, right? So, so we've really leveraged that, that OCP model. There's just not, not that much going on. It's, it's simplified and high performance, right? So we're able to put six of those devices on. The den highest density that exists today um, is 3.84 terabyte. So that means 23 terabytes on a single node, right? And then as you see in the diagram, we can put um, up to 48 nodes um, into a rack, so we get close to a petabyte um, with just that configuration, right? And that's what I show here. So here we have um, 48 nodes, so I show um, 42 converged nodes. We can put um, VMware, um, vSAN, we can run Linux with, with various kinds of, of software-defined storage, um, put various types of, of converged stacks on here. Um, and we can do a rack with these servers, um, almost a petabyte of flash, right? Just a few, uh, few terabytes shy of, of a petabyte. We've got over 1,000 cores in this system. We got over 40 terabytes of memory. So this can really you know, run rings around um, many of or most of the systems that, um, that you might design in, uh, in standard 19-inch, um, right? We get the density advantage. We get the shared power advantage. We have a lot of, of capacity um, squeezed into the rack. But for, um, for some of our customers, it was, um, it was still not, uh, not sufficient. So um, I'm going to skip this one for a second. I'm going to go here. So, um, so then what we looked at was, all right, how can we squeeze more density um, even than that, right? And in the OCP models, um, the next place to go for density is you look beyond Leopard. So the next generation was, is Yosemite, right? Or a parallel generation, really. Um, so Yosemite is a platform designed to be more dense, right? But in order to become more dense, there were some trade-offs, right? So it's a single socket platform. Right? It's four nodes um, that share a BMC. Right? So now, you know, suddenly enterprise folks start to get freaked out. Wait, my BMC, like there's, there's one for the four nodes. Like how do I do that? I, don't, I want my VGA, I want my BIOS, whatever. There's, there's some, some downsides to that. But most importantly, when our customers thought about their workloads, they told us like, yeah, single socket is great, your socket is bigger, but I can't put as much storage, I, I can't you know, get as much total cores, right? I can't get as much memory. Um, so 
it's, it's not an excellent solution for them. So we've, we've put that together, we can do over a petabyte, we can do 100 nodes, we can do 2,000 cores with Yosemite, but our customers felt like they were, they were making a trade-off, right? And, um, and so then we said, all right, well, what can we do? How can we make a two-socket server more dense, right? And so we looked at the rack and we're like, well, why is this rack not dense, right? Well, because there's some tall, there's a few tall things um, in, in each node. And so what was tall in the node, right? And so this is a, um, some CAD of the nodes, right? And so anyone who's familiar with either the, the Tiger Pass Leopard line of, of servers, right? You know it's a two-socket server. There are two, two U heat sinks, right? Then there's um, normally two fans on the back. So they're not shown here. We've already taken those off. I'll explain that in a second. And then there's a PCI riser complex at the back, or at the, sorry, at the front of the node um, in this diagram. And that's also two U tall in order to, to do those, those um, a by eight and a by 16. So we said, all right, what if, we, what if we wanted to shrink this down, right? So we said, okay, so first of all, we need um, shorter heat sinks, but that's fine, right? There's plenty of servers out there that have one, one, OU, one U heat sinks instead of two OU. So so that's straightforward. So um, we picked up some, some one U heat sinks. So now the heat sinks are, are one U tall. Then we got the fans on the back. And we're like, well, if we're going to double the density, then we got a, a heat um, dissipation problem anyway, because we're also um, really bumping up the KW. So um, we have some small scale solutions that we're doing with smaller fans on the back. So instead of two, two OU fans, we have four um, one OU fans. But we've also um, adapted with some of our partners these platforms for um, liquid cooling, water cooling specifically. Right? So we've been running these servers um, with, a, with a customer, with actually um, two, two different customers um, and some other partners um, with water cooling for over two years. Right? So water cooling is another way to get rid of the heat and we also can do a lower profile kind of heat transfer plate. So the only thing left is that PCI slot in the back, right? And so they're like, yeah, PCI riser, it's not that complicated electronics, it's, it's some traces, it's, it's some connectors. And, uh, and so we, we designed our own um, connector there. Um, so we put on a 1OU riser, right? So we're able to use, in the, in the design that's shown here, we're able to use everything that is existing um, OCP designs. The only new design that we did is we made the riser board half as tall as it was before. We're still using the AVA, et cetera. And what's the benefit for the customer? The benefit for the customer is I can now put 96 nodes in a rack instead of 48. So double, right? Um, I've only got four NVMe drives. Before, if you noticed, I could do six, right? So it's a small compromise, but at the rack level, um, it's, a, it's still a, a huge advantage. So I now have 1.4 petabytes of, of flash storage. I have over 2,600 cores, right? Um, 48 terabytes of memory. Um, on this platform, right? So we've, with, with basically mechanical innovation, we've doubled the density on a per rack, uh, on a per rack basis, right? We now have a pretty big um, KW footprint, right? This, this 35, that's probably the, the, the pessimistic, right? So, but it's gonna go at least into the 26, 28 range, right? So that's why we need some of our partners in, in the immersion space. We've also, um, oh, I have that in, in slides. So we've, we've done a couple of partnership, whoops, um, cooling solutions. So we worked with our friends at 2CRSI. There's, they have a fan wall solution that we've integrated um, for some customer cases. We've got the um, immersion solutions from um, our two partners there. Um, we've also worked with um, the folks at Cloud and Heat. And we have two customers that are doing water cooling kind of with proprietary solutions, right? So we have several, um, we have um, thousands of servers running in water cooling today, right? And then um, the, one, the one final piece of that is, you know, since the designs are very similar, um, we can do the same thing with Tioga Pass. So we're just finishing this in the lab. So we're gonna do the same shrinky dink with, um, with Tioga Pass. And that'll give us um, the solution you see here. Storage remains the same, still those four, 384 devices. But now I can do almost 4,000 cores um, in a single rack. Um, power profile still pretty high. So I gotta, you know, get enough electrons in there and, um, and exhaust the heat out, um, but we're able to achieve um, almost 4,000 cores, right? So that's that solution. 
And, um, and then let me just um, point to one more um, item back here in the storage piece, and then I can, I can take one or two questions if people have them. So the other thing that we did just to expand out our storage line um, is we went in two directions. So the first one that we wanted, we had some customers that were looking for um, a dense HDD solution. OCP has the Bryce Canyon. Then we worked with Western Digital on, on a system they call Ultrastar. We codenamed it Grand Canyon because we're not, we're not very um, creative. And um, what that allows is six host connects instead of just two on the Bryce Canyon. So we're getting 30 extra drives in the same space than Bryce Canyon. And most importantly for some of our customers, we're getting six host connects instead of two. So we can get notionally six times the bandwidth, but more importantly, we can create kind of Hadoop style solutions with that. And then the final solution on here is a dense JVOF solution. There we've worked with um, our friends at MyTAC on the, on the Crystal Lake design, which is an OCP design. Again, we call it Fast Canyon because you know, we're not that creative. So people can keep it straight. But that also allows us to do over seven petabytes, close to eight petabytes of HDD storage. And with the, with the Fast Canyon, with the Crystal Lake, we're able to do just shy of six petabytes of flash storage. So if the, you know, the converged wasn't good enough, then you've got this. So I can entertain, I think, maybe one or two questions if folks uh, have it. Anyone want to speak up? Is that my, my time slot? Anybody? An NVMe storage? Yeah, so, so the question is, do we have an NVMe storage solution? Absolutely. So I showed actually two solutions with NVMe. I showed the onboard NVMe up to a, a terabyte, one and a half terabytes, uh, one and a half petabytes almost in a rack, and um, the dense solution over five petabytes a rack. So yeah, um, all NVMe across the board. And, and these slides will be available. There's folks in the booth to answer these questions. Um, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.